Welcome to this uh, webinar on the Coastal Highway E39 project. Uh, this uh, webinar will be uh, recorded. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us here today. Uh, we have uh, today we have uh, Zhongga Wang who will be presenting his work on the aerodynamics of a novel state cable cross-sectional shape. Uh, this is uh, work that he did while uh, he was at the university in Stavanger. Uh, we'll uh, allow Zhongao to uh, present first, and uh, at the end we open up for uh, questions. So, uh, Zhongao, please take it away. Yeah, thank you, Matthias, for the introduction. So hello everyone, uh, my name is Jun Gao Wan. Uh, I'm currently working now at the uh, uh, Norwegian Public Road Administration on the Coastal Highway Road E39 project. And uh, today I will present part of the research work that I did as a postdoc researcher at the University of Stavanger uh, together with Professor Jasna Jakobsen. And uh, the topic is about the bridge cable aerodynamics of a uh, novel cross-sectional shape uh, as you have seen here uh, below the title. It's like a cactus shape. So uh, the research work uh, is mainly focused on the experimental studies in the wind tunnels. And uh, we did the, uh, the test at the National Research Council Canada and uh, collaborated with RWDI uh, in Canada. So uh, here is the outline of my presentation today. So I will Firstly, uh, introduce some background of wind-induced induced cable vibrations, starting from some important parameters, and then followed by different type of uh, cable vibrations, uh, and also with some examples. Uh, and then I will jump uh, to uh, what we have done in the wind tunnel uh, for this uh, novel bridge cable uh, cross sectional cross -section shape. And I will show some uh, preliminary results that we have uh, obtained from the wind tunnel test. And then uh, I will try to conclude and uh, uh, have some discussion on the future works. So uh, here to the right of the slide, uh, you have a sketch of a cable uh, in three dimensional uh, subjected to wind. So uh, I have firstly separated the parameters into two categories. So one is in terms of the a cable from a structural point of view. So you have the total length uh, of the cable and also you have the outer diameter. And then of course, uh, for some uh, applications, then you have a uh, different geometry for the cross-sectional uh, uh, geometry of the cable as well. So for example, you have uh, probably the spiral wires to, to prevent the uh, rain wind induced vibration and we will talk about that later and of course you will have another parameter uh, which is very important the mass per, per unit length and also the uh, damping coefficient uh, which is uh, uh, also very important uh, in terms of uh, cable vibration problems and uh, most of the cable uh, or all the cables uh, in the bridge, uh, sta uh, in a state cable bridge, are actually inclined. So you have a, another parameter, a theta. You can see uh, that in the um, sketch here. So basically, it's it's an inclination angle to the uh, horizontal axis. And from uh, the wind point of view, you have the mean wind velocity, and also uh, you have the turbulence intensity, and the wind will also change its direction so it, it will have a angle with respect to the horizontal axis of the uh, cable plan so that's denoted as beta, uh, beta in the sketch and if we think about the angle between the wind direction and the cable axis then we have a wind cable plan angle phi so these are uh, some parameters um, from two points one is from cable the other one is from wind and more specifically, we have, we have some more important parameters that uh, is important uh, for the wind-induced cable vibration problems. 
So the first parameter, uh, we call it the scrutin number. So basically is a combination of the mass and also the damping parameter. Uh, and some, uh, I mean, at different research community, uh, there are slightly different uh, definition of scrutin number. So the, the definition I'm using here is uh, very popularly used in the North America, in Canada and in the US. Uh, we're here in Europe, actually, uh, there is a slightly different uh, definition of that. Will, you will have uh, 4 pi uh, times this one I'm using. Then it's uh, the one we have in the Euro code. Or, yeah. And uh, the second uh, really important parameter is the Reynolds number. And uh, the Reynolds number is defined as the uh, velocity times the, the characteristic uh, uh, width or diameter of the structure divided by the kinematic uh, viscosity. And here I have given two definitions. One is to use the incoming uh, wind velocity. The other one is to use the wind that is normal to the cable axis. So I will also talk about uh, this in the uh, result discussion uh, part, why we have these two uh, definition. And the third one is the eigen frequency because we uh, are investigating the vibration problems. So uh, the eigenfrequency of the structure is also very important. So here I only give you a, a generalized definition for a, a structure where you have the stiffness and also you have the mass. And uh, uh, so f for the cables, uh, for the bridge cables, the stiffness is dominated by the uh, tension uh, and the bending stiffness is contributed to very limited to the eigenfrequency. And the fourth important one is the uh, uh, parameter is the shading frequency. So this is the straw hole uh, frequency, uh, which is calculated to can be uh, by, by this equation. You have the uh, straw hole number, and here uh, you have the normal uh, component of the wind velocity to, uh, with respect to the cable axis, and also the uh, diameter of the uh, cable. And the fifth one is the reduced velocity. So here, reduced velocity is a non-dimensional uh, parameter to uh, qualify the magnitude of the wind velocity respect to uh, the structural uh, eigenfrequency and the diameter. So um, I want to point out that, uh, firstly, the scrotal number, uh, the reason we have it here is that scrotal number is a very important important uh, parameter that governs the amplitude for the um, wind induced vibration uh, of many type. And the Reynolds number here uh, is a very good uh, parameter that indicates the flow regime uh, of this uh, cable or the cylinder uh, is experienced under different wind, wind uh, velocity. So we will uh, use these uh, parameters very often in the following slides. So now we are going to uh, talk about several different type of uh, wind induced vibrations um, in terms of bridge uh, cables. So here, uh, actually, I'm showing a video uh, of vortex induced vibration of a bridge cable that's recorded in the US of a pedestrian bridge in 2012. I know maybe some, many of you cannot uh, see the uh, video very clearly because uh, of the uh, lagging uh, of the Skype, but um, uh, you, you see uh, some parameters that are given to the right of the video. So under a mean wind uh, speed of 3.6 meter per second, you will have 11 hertz of vibration, uh, and the amplitude is 6%, and uh, at this wind speed, the cable vibrates at the seventh natural mode, but in the, in the video here, actually, it shows a much higher uh, response uh, vibration frequency because the the video was recorded actually at about at, at about 12 meter per second uh, by some people just passing by uh, the bridge. But the the number I'm showing to the right is uh, I got from a report uh, uh, that they they have um, investigated for the VIV problem for this uh, bridge. And speaking of vertex induced vibration. 
it was a kind of well-known fluid structure interaction problem. And uh, so when you have the uh, wind attacking the structure, you have the uh, flow uh, separation, and then you have the vortex shading uh, behind the structure. And uh, as I've also mentioned in the previous slides, there is an important parameter called the Stroho uh, frequency or the shading frequency that is governed by uh, the equation here. And uh, it's proportional to uh, the wind speed. So when the shading frequency uh, from the wind is similar to one of the eigenfrequency of the structure, and then the structure, if th at the same time the structure has a fairly low uh, damping level, it will start to vibrate and the structural or will also try to uh, lock in uh, to the vibration amplitude you have and then at the end you will have some steady uh, vibration amplitude at the, at the uh, constant uh, frequency and then it will have some fatigue uh, problems. So vortex into vibration was um, a big, big research topic uh, not only in aerodynamics but also in hydrodynamics and the uh, VIV in aerodynamics has been seen in the overhead power lines and also uh, in the bridge hangars. Actually, in Norway, it has been um, observed both in Hadanger Bridge and Lissafjord Bridge um, uh, for the hangars, uh, this VIV problem. And speaking of the VIV problem for this uh, Sabo pedestrian bridge in the US, and uh, after only five years, uh, of this uh, kind of vibration problem, one of the connection plates uh, at the end of the cable uh, was uh, broken because of the vibration. And you, you see to the left of the figure that uh, two uh, cables was actually dropped because of that. And uh, fortunately, there's no people got uh, then, uh, how, how to say, uh, killed or uh, injured by that. But uh, it was a huge amount of uh, money to to uh, repair it, and uh, they have done the investigation. And uh, the reason was uh, VIV was not uh, considered in the design phase, and the damping uh, in the cable structure is not enough to suppress it. And uh, after after they repair it, they add uh, uh, some additional uh, damper to the uh, cable, so the vibration uh, was uh, controlled. So the second type of bridge cable vibration is the very famous rain wind or ice uh, ice induced vibration. Most most likely people are well known about the rain wind induced vibration called RWIV. And uh, <clears throat> I think now the video probably you can see it because the frequency is much lower for the rain wind induced vibration. So here it's uh, recorded by Koei for the Ödersund cable stay bridge um, between Sweden and uh, Denmark. So um, the amplitude of the vibration is about two meter uh, for some stream, uh, some events, but I'm not sure uh, how uh, large the amplitude exactly in this video, but you can see it's quite large. And uh, this is the, the reason for this uh, huge uh, amplitude uh, vibration is because uh, in the winter time there is a very uh, thin uh, thin layer of the ice and also there was some rain uh, that uh, that day when this video was uh, uh, taken and then there was some wind blowing of course and then you start to have a very low frequency but large amplitude uh, vibration and uh, at the time, there were there was already some dampers installed in the bridge, but after some time, uh, the damper also failed, and uh, the new dampers actually has been uh, designed and then installed to uh, mitigate uh, this kind of vibration, and this has been uh, described it, uh, in one of the PhD uh, theses in DTU I have referred here. So the reason or the mechanism of uh, rain wind induced vibration is because when it rains or it snows, the uh, aerodynamic or the cross-sectional shape of the cable was changed. And then the aerodynamics of the cross-sectional uh, shape was also changed. And then you start to have some instability or uh, uh, problems. So here are some of the uh, 
different shape or different treatments of the bridge cable surface in order to um, control the rain wind induced vibration. So from the left to the right in the bow, you see the helical uh, wires and the indented um, indented uh, surface treatment of the cable and also some grooved uh, um, uh, shape and also some other uh, type of indented surface. So they, this kind of a different type of uh, treatment has been used for different type of uh, or different um, state cable bridges in different countries. So I think in Japan and in um, China, the indented surface are used uh, quite often and the uh, helical wires are quite uh, popularly used in the U US and also in the Europe. And uh, to the, uh, at the uh, right and the bo bottom, I show the other two uh, surface treatment, which are fairly new, uh, developed by Professor, uh, one professor at uh, DTU, I think now he's at Aalborg in Denmark. And uh, uh, here they try to uh, basically optimize the shape of the uh, wire or the uh, arrangement of the, um, how say, the uh, um, surface treatment in order to have a better uh, aerodynamic performance compared to the old ones in, in above. So, uh, but speaking of rain, uh, wind vibration, so it is actually the most frequently observed uh, cable vibration in most of the state cable bridges. And uh, as I also mentioned in the previous video, it was characterized with a low frequency vibration, but with a fairly large amplitude. And uh, most of the time, people actually can witness uh, these kind of large uh, amplitude. And uh, rain wind induced vibration is typically happen at the wind uh, speed range from five to 15 meter per second. And uh, uh, so one way to to control the rain, rain wind into vibration is to to change uh, the um, cross sectional shape uh, shape in, to to be, to have a better aerodynamic uh, performance. So the other way is to actually uh, increase the damping level. So that uh, that is because the rain induced vibration is strongly influenced influenced by the screw number, as I uh, mentioned in the uh, previous slides. So if you add additional damper, you could potentially also um, uh, control the rain wind induced vibration as well. But that will uh, means uh, you need to maintain the, the, the dampers as well, as I have mentioned for the Orson uh, bridge, that they have actually updated the dampers. And uh, the rain wind induced vibration is uh, not so dependent on the wind turbulence intensity and also and not so de so dependent on the rain uh, condition. So at a fairly smaller rain or moderate uh, moderate rain condition, you, you will um, have that uh, vibration. So the third uh, vibration type is the wick induced galloping. So let's also start uh, with the video. I hope you can see it. So this is recorded in one of the uh, longest bridge in China. It's called the Shihomen Bridge. It's the second longest uh, suspension bridge in the world, and uh, so. But but here the vibration is for uh, the hangers instead of of the um, cables. So um, the researchers in China they suspect uh, the the vibration of the hanger uh, you see here is because of the wake um, after the uh, tower. So after the uh, wake, you have some turbulent uh, field. So that will also uh, induce buffeting kind of uh, um, response of the cable, but also, um, yeah, sometimes uh, depending on the location of uh, the downstream cable, you probably also have some uh, galloping problems. So the last one uh, type is, uh, we, we call it a dry inclined cable galloping or dry uh, cable galloping. Uh, so this is one of the most, uh, I would say, uh, difficult uh, problem to be uh, researched. So um, so the problem is that uh, even for some of the uh, bridges uh, in the world, there is no rain, there is no ice, and uh, 
adding there some wind uh, velocity with some you know uh, certain wind directions the vibe uh, the, the cable also start to vibrate uh, violently and uh, but this is uh, kind of different uh, from all the mechanisms we see from previous three uh, type of vibrations and uh, I think up to now there's not a very clear or very uh, definitive uh, explanation or mechanism for that so but here i have listed these four possible uh, explanation uh, for dry inclined cable galloping so the first one is as i said um, you always have a wind cable angle phi so what the wind sees so if we, we cut from uh, horizontally uh, to the cable cross section you actually see a oval uh, or oval kind of cross-sectional shape so the wind actually sees a non-circular circular cross-sectional uh, shape so that may be um, how does it lead to some uh, galloping kind of problems so that's what the, uh, one of the uh, explanation so the second one is uh, so it's also related to the uh, wind cable angle so because that your the wind is not the uh, attacking the cable from the normal direction so you also have some actual directions so when the wind is uh, how to say uh, passing uh, through the cable you also have some actual flow uh, uh, at the uh, how to say the downstream of the cable so that probably will lead to some instability problems and third one is the critical Reynolds number regime and uh, for some of you probably are known with uh, the drag crisis for a circular cylinder, uh, you know that uh, with the increasing of the Reynolds number, typically at the Reynolds number range of two to the uh, ten power to the to the power of five uh, to the three uh, ten power of five, you have a flow regime that uh, we call it uh, the crit critical Reynolds number, and it char characterized by uh, uh, dramatic uh, dra uh, drag uh, uh, decrease and at the same time you also have some uh, uh, stay jumps uh, that is uh, the lift direction will uh, jump from directions from side to from one side to the other side so you will have some uh, unstable uh, f uh, problems in terms of, of uh, fluid and the fourth uh, explanation possible uh, explanation is the cross-sectional imperfections so um, that is recently uh, discovered by the survey uh, of the bridge cable uh, in service in, in most of the take cable bridge in the US so they have uh, scanned the cross-sectional shape of the uh, cable and they found that uh, actually the cable cross-section was not perfectly uh, circular so you have some imp imperfections so that means your uh, aerodynamics uh, or the drag or the uh, lift coefficients will be dependent on your uh, actual uh, rotation so that will also lead to some uh, kind of galloping problems um, but uh, most as I said most of the uh, you, you have some uh, field ob observation for the dry galloping but it was not so often um, discovered so, but most of the, um, at, I mean, for the videos or the uh, reported uh, dry galloping problems are uh, from the wind tunnels, and uh, most of also of the most of the problems are um, have a cable inclination angle uh, smaller to 60 degrees. And uh, so, related to the cable uh, vibration problems, to our project now in Norway for this uh, floating bridge uh, project. So here I show you one of the Bjorna floating bridge designs, which uh, include part of the, um, uh, actually at the one side of the bridge was the cable state bridge. And uh, even though the cable state bridge is not uh, so uh, long compared to the total uh, floating bridge, but still the uh, side span or the scale of the height uh, of this cable state bridge is comparable to uh, the world record uh, cable state bridge. So here uh, to the right, I, I, I give you some examples uh, about the 
cable length. Um, so currently, the uh, how to say the the longest uh, uh, cable stay bridge is the Ruski bridge in Russia. So it has a longest uh, cable. Uh, br uh, uh, how's a bridge cable at 580 meters and the current design of the Bunafield uh, uh, cable bridge we have a longest cable at 449 meters so uh, so the cable that so with the uh, longer cable it means you have a uh, more flexible uh, cable and a lower uh, eigen frequency So that means also you will uh, have a higher reduced uh, uh, velocity if you, you still remember the parameters that I mentioned uh, in the previous previous slides. And also uh, increasing uh, diameter as well. That means you will have a higher Reynolds number at the same wind uh, velocity. So now I'm going to uh, talk about some of the uh, uh, experimental study on the uh, novel bridge cable, which is the cactus shape. So uh, the reason we chose uh, cactus shape, or is uh, back to the uh, question that why uh, a desert cactus they will survive in a strong wind, um, and uh, the reason or the possible reason is that uh, if you see to the right of the slides you see a cross-sectional shape of the cactus so it has a grooved cross-section and uh, and uh, we believe or researchers believe that this grooved uh, cross-section helps uh, the cactus to uh, grow really high and uh, with a fairly big uh, diameter in the desert where a uh, strong wind often occur, occurs so uh, here uh, there's some previous uh, research on the wind tunnel test of a, um, a grooved uh, cylinder uh, similar to uh, what you see in the previous slide with many uh, grooves uh, at the cross uh, at the cross sections compared to a smooth uh, cylinder so here uh, is uh, some uh, wind tunnel test uh, carried out by a researcher in the US about 20 years ago uh, so the you see the um, the blue curves is for the smooth cylinder, and the rest of the um, cylinder uh, so rest of the uh, curves are either with uh, roughness or with uh, the the grooves. So one of the important uh, uh, conclusion for the grooved cylinder compared to the smooth cylinder is that it has a less uh, abrupt drag reduction at the critical Reynolds number. So for, um, as I mentioned, for the uh, cr circular cylinder at the cr critical Reynolds number, you will have a dramatic change of the drag uh, coefficient from probably 1.2 to 0 0.3. But uh, for the um, grooved cylinder, the, the, um, this decrease will be much, much uh, gradual and much, much gentle. And also, it will happens at much lower reduced velocity, uh, much much lower uh, Reynolds number, which means a lower wind velocity. And uh, they also found that the drag coefficient will decrease with uh, increasing uh, depth of these uh, uh, grooves. And uh, but it also has a, a different philosophy uh, compared to the cylinders with a surface roughness because for cylinder with roughness actually it has a similar uh, conclusions as, as what I have said for the two uh, points uh, above for uh, for a groove cylinder which means less abrupt drag and also you have a, a smaller uh, critical uh, Reynolds number range but you will have an increase of the drag uh, after the critical Reynolds number range for the uh, for the rough cylinder, but not for the groove cylinder. And uh, so, based on that, then uh, there are some other people done either wind tunnel test to see the um, uh, fluid field around the uh, groove cylinder, uh, or some uh, other test uh, in the water. To, to see the possible uh, way of uh, using a 
kind, kind of cactus shape in hydrodynamic uh, field. So then we try to think, why don't we apply this kind of shape uh, for bridge cables? And then we did uh, uh, this kind of uh, test in the, uh, in the National Research Council uh, uh, of Canada, one of the uh, aerodynamic laboratory there. So here is uh, some of the uh, parameters for our uh, model. So we have actually less uh, grooves compared to a real cactus, because uh, this is based on some previous research that they, they conclude that this is uh, the optimum number of the uh, grooves to uh, suppress VIV uh, in, in, in the water, actually. So uh, we just took uh, uh, this kind of design um, to see, to test whether it will try to uh, mitigate cable vibrations in air. And uh, the total diameter of, uh, of the uh, cable we tested in, in the wind tunnel is nine centimeters. So we actually have a scaling ratio of two compared to a, a full scale uh, cable. And the uh, depth of the groove uh, compared to the uh, diameter is 4%. And also we have uh, divided the total length, uh, 1.8 meters, into four segments. So um, we can uh, try to see the segment rotation effect uh, in the wind tunnel as well. And so the wind speed uh, for in the wind tunnel test it, uh, covered from 7 to 70 meters per second. And we used a Reynolds number similarity uh, uh, for the uh, design of the wind speed range. So we have two setups. So firstly, uh, we did the st static test, means the cable was hold still. And um, so we measured the aerodynamic forces acting on the cable. And, but we considered four different uh, kind of uh, uh, effects. So we tested different yaw uh, angle effect. We test a different uh, actual cable rotation effect because we, if we have a, a cactus, actually, uh, if we rotate uh, the cable, uh, actually, you will also have different um, aerodynamic coefficients. So we want to study that. And also, uh, as I mentioned, we have four segments. So we could actually uh, rotate the segment uh, uh, with each other so we can see the effect of that. And also, uh, with different velocity, we have different Reynolds number effect. So uh, on top of that, we have the dynamic setups uh, as well. So there we measure the motion of the cable. And uh, so we have all these uh, effects studied uh, similarly from the static test. But on top of that, we also have uh, uh, studied the mass damping um, parameter. So basically we can control the damping level that uh, we want to have for the dynamic setup, so we can um, study that as well. Uh, so here is a brief summary of, in general, what uh, are the test cases we have. So the inclination was uh, fixed at 60 degrees, and we have three uh, different yaw angles. Actually, these three different yaw angles for um, for static, actually, we have four uh, yaw angles, I think, for the dynamic setup. And uh, for the actual cable vibration, we have three different values covering from the peak uh, of the ridge to the um, to the valley of the trough. And oh, we have the segment rotation, as I mentioned. Yeah. So the Reynolds number uh, range is from five times to the 10 power four to the four times uh, 10 power five. And the scrutin number uh, we have covered from 2.7 to 35. So in total, we have 16, 16 static cases and 27 dynamic cases. But inside of each case, then we have uh, quite several uh, wind velocities. So actually we have quite a lot of cases. And uh, so uh, as I mentioned, in the static uh, cases, we are more interested in the uh, coefficients. So, and in the dynamics, and we are interested in the motions. Uh, but when we are looking to, or in the next next few slides, when I'm going to talk about the results, so actually, um, we uh, have uh, only looked into the results 
which is normal to the bridge axis. So it means we have transformed all the uh, force measurement or the uh, cable vibration to the um, to the uh, cable cross section, uh, which is normal to the uh, bridge axis. And I'm, I'm not going to elaborate how we did the transformation, but uh, we have some paper published last year and probably you have some more information there. And uh, here is a picture shows uh, the setup of the end conditions. So this is actually under the static setup. So you see to the left, you ha we have a load cell, um, which uh, actually here we measure the cross wind uh, or uh, the sway direction uh, force and behind you don't see it but behind the cable we have another um, load cell which measure the uh, we call the heave direction of the um, of the force and when we do the uh, dynamic setup we replace these load cells with the springs here you see um, to the right and to the bottom part and then we um, the, the cable is free to vibrate and uh, in the dynamic setup, we have the air bearings. So uh, the, the, actually the, the entire uh, cable was suspended uh, by the air bearings. So there is no contact with uh, the supporting frame uh, you see here. And uh, I also mentioned that we can adjust the damping. So that is uh, achieved by use the magnetic uh, uh, mag mag magnets, uh, number of magnets, magnets under the sporting frame, but it's also uh, non-contact uh, to the bottom frame. So that's uh, kind of based on the eddy current uh, we generated, and then we can generate the, the damping. And the damping is uh, quite linear at different uh, amplitude, and we have validated that uh, before the test. So now uh, let's jump to some results. So, uh, so here is from the static results. So first is about the yo angle effect. Um, so we have three different uh, yo angles. Uh, so to the right, it's the mean drag coefficient with uh, different Reynolds number, and also to the bottom is uh, the lift coefficient. And to uh, the the left would be based on. Uh, or the result is presented based on the Reynolds number calculated by the incoming velocity, but the uh, right is calculated based on the uh, normal component, uh, uh, how to say, velocity calculated, or we call it a normal uh, re re uh, Reynolds number. So we, you, you see from the comparison of the drag coefficient that uh, we have a fairly good uh, agreement for different O angles uh, um, across all the Reynolds number regime. But uh, if you use a normal uh, component to present the results, then especially at the uh, part, I don't know whether you see the, my mouse here, here, uh, when the drag is about to degrees, you have some um, mismatch for different yaw angles. So that is related to uh, the independence principle uh, we uh, know in probably fluid uh, fluid around the cylinder uh, cylinders so we have um, we have actually concluded that uh, for the drag uh, if we use the incoming velocity uh, instead of the normal component of, of the velocity to present the result actually we have a pretty good agreement uh, that means uh, the drag is the, the drag is independent of the yaw angle uh, but this is not the case for the lift coefficient, uh, simply because uh, it's it's uh, much more complicated uh, if we have a grooved uh, cylinder and uh, yeah. So here uh, is a result for the actual cable rotation effect. So we basically rotate the uh, angle, uh, the, the the cable angle from zero to uh, 25 degrees, 0.5 degrees in uh, 13, I think, steps. And uh, so basically the wind is, is attacking at different uh, part of the uh, shape, if you see uh, here. So it's attacking from zero to 22.5, uh, 
uh, 22.50 degrees. So the result here, I only show the drag in these slides, is that uh, compared to a, a how to say a circular cylinder, which is presented by the um, black dots here, for the um, cactus shape, we have fairly less abrupt um, drag uh, decrease, right? And also this decrease or the when the drag starts to decrease, it also happens at a very lower uh, Reynolds number, a very smaller uh, Reynolds number compared to the uh, smooth uh, cylinder. So that is uh, what we uh, wanted or what we expected because we hope that uh, uh, this shape uh, with a less abrupt uh, decrease in drag will help uh, to uh, kind of have a stable uh, performance uh, in this critical Reynolds number range. And but with a increasing, uh, how to say, uh, rotation of the uh, actual angle, we actually see uh, you, you you try to have more uh, abrupt the drag actually, and also the the uh, the start of the decrease also happens at a um, how to say higher Reynolds number. So so this is uh, what we have observed for drag for the different angle rotation. And similarly, we have uh, the results for the lift uh, for the lift uh, coefficient. So, uh, similarly, we don't have we also have a different uh, results for different uh, actual rotations. But I want to mention uh, something uh, which is not so good for our cactus cable is that at uh, roughly at the 220 uh, sorry 22.5 angle of attack, and uh, we if we change the uh, rotation a little bit, and then we see a quite significant change of lift uh, here in the high wind velocities. And also the sign or the direction of the lift also changes. So this is something uh, pretty uh, bad and we don't uh, actually, we don't want that. So this will also lead to some problems actually uh, in the dynamic uh, response, and I will explain it. I will show you that. And this is something we are actually going to optimize in the future work. Uh, so here is some result about the uh, seg segment rotation effect. So we basically rotate the, the uh, segment uh, one respect to the to the other. So here I, I show you some re uh, the result is the black is the uh, all the cable or the four segments is um, at zero directions. The blue is, uh, sorry, the the red is at 25 degrees, but the, uh, uh, the the green is with segment rotations. And the triangle, the blue triangles is um, simply, uh, how to say, uh, average uh, of the black and the red results. So it's kind of manipulated results. So we want to compare whether we can have the same result if we compare the blue and uh, the uh, the green. So if if they have a fairly good agreement, then we would say the strip theory or we have a less three-dimensional effect, but that is not the case uh, for the mean drag uh, coefficient and also not the case for the mean lift coefficient. But uh, uh, at the, I mean, I mean at the diagonal part, but for some cases, but some other cases, for example, at the zero yaw and uh, for the drag coefficient, it works actually quite well. And also for the uh, 90 yaw for the lift, it also works quite well. Quite well. So there are some uh, occasions where uh, these segment the rotation are not working um, as expected as the strip stru theory, and that has to be contributed to the three-dimensional uh, fluid structure interaction. Uh, yeah, because we have a quite uh, complicated uh, geometry now, and also with the the inclination of the cable. And uh, so here are um, just some results showing. Uh, the uh, vortex shading. So this is actually a spectrum counter plot at different uh, wind velocities. So we have observed a classical straw hole 
shading uh, frequency for the cable as well. So this is for uh, the um, yaw angle of 90 degrees. So the next slide is um, actually also 90 degrees, but with a different uh, actual angle to 20. Uh, 2.5 degrees, but here then we actually observed two uh, Stroho number. So at a, a higher Reynolds number, probably is governed by the black line, which is 0 0.22. But uh, at a, a smaller Reynolds number, then it's governed by uh, another Stroho number, 0 0.18. And uh, I see I don't have much time, but. Uh, I will quickly uh, went through some of the dynamic results uh, that we we got. So the first uh, effect is this Stroholm, uh, sorry, the Scruton number effect. So basically, we studied different uh, damping levels. Uh, so here is a quite a critical case uh, at uh, your zero uh, your angle, and also the actual uh, rotation is 225 degrees, which uh, with, was a bad one, which which we see the. A flip of the lift uh, direction, and we see actually at a fairly small uh, screw number at 9.1, we have fairly large cross-sectional response, up to 0 0.55 um, compared to the uh, uh, diameter of the uh, cylinder, and we didn't proceed to a higher uh, wind speed because we we we. we we feel that uh, it's going to gallop, uh, and and then we didn't uh, we didn't proceed. But then we just added uh, another damp uh, quite a lar lar large damping level, and then we managed to go to a quite a higher wind velocity up to 70 meter per second. That is uh, corresponding to 35 per meter per second in the in the full scale in the real case, and uh, we still observed 0 0.4. Um, uh, how to say of the non-dimensional uh, amplitude, and uh, let's because uh, the the typical screw number actually for a cable state bridge is recommended to be above ten um, to uh, kill to suppress the rain wind induced vibration. So most of the cable state bridge actually will not have a damping level as high as thirty five point four. So, um, but of course this is uh, the, the case uh, or a kind of theoretical case in the uh, wind tunnel test that uh, we have a uniform uh, velocity uh, at one rigid uh, segment. But it's a kind of indication how um, the screw number will affect the, uh, the response of cable vibration response and how big it is uh, vibrating. And here it's uh, trajectory uh, for the two uh, kind of cases or two score numbers. So uh, I didn't give the uh, how to say so the different color actually means a different uh, uh, wind velocity but um, I didn't give the corresponding velocity to different uh, colors here but I just want to uh, show you that uh, even uh, how to say at a 70 meter per second to the right, and we are having a smaller amplitude uh, in cross uh, di cross uh, flow direction compared to a lower score number. Yeah, so this is the trajectories, and here I hope you can see uh, how it vibrates at. Uh, the 40 meter per second for the score number of 9.1, yeah, the case that I just mentioned, that the amplitude reaches to 0 0.55. Yeah, so this is how it vibrates in the wind tunnel. And then some more results, uh, how to say, uh, for the score number effect. So in this case, we have a segment of rotation actually, and uh, basically it's a similar to what we see before, but just with some more screw numbers. So we are actually not able to uh, to to suppress the uh, the quite large amplitude of vibration, even at uh, a quite large uh, screw number. So, but uh, we managed to. Uh, 
how to say, uh, reduce that, uh, of course, with the screw, uh, increasing score number, but uh, you see for a fairly small score number, it tends to, to go um, kind of vertically and tend to, uh, to gallop. Yeah, so this is uh, not good. But if actually we have a zero, 90 degrees of yaw, even with a fairly small uh, score number, we are not having a big uh, amplitude. So this is, um, as I mentioned, uh, why dry, gallop, dry, galloping prob uh, dry, dry uh, cable galloping problems are more um, important for the inclined cable or yeah, with the uh, with a yaw shift, because if you have uh, 90 degrees of yaw, then basically what the cable uh, feels is that uh, it's perpendicular to the uh, cable axis, so you don't have uh, an actual uh, flow effect. Yeah, so this is a result for different yaw. As I said, uh, so here it probably is more clear that with the increasing of yaw, then you have much smaller um, response amplitude. But the response amplitude is most uh, uh, significant at the zero yaw, which means you have a, a wind cable angle at, uh, at uh, 60 degrees. And here is some result for the actual rotation effect. So it's, um, it's Actually, it's not uh, so surprising compared to uh, what we have uh, got from the uh, static uh, results. So they are um, kind of, uh, uh, how to say, increase with uh, the increase of the uh, actual rotation angle. Yeah. And also with the rotation, a uh, segment rotation effect, uh, we um, help to to how to say uh, balance some uh, some negative effect that we see at 22.5 degrees uh, rotation angle so uh, then some conclusion so we I have tried to review some of the windage vibration uh, problems and uh, for the ca cactus cable design we have a less significant uh, reduction of drag and also it's less um, abrupt. And also uh, the drag crisis or the flu, uh, uh, that the flu regime happens at a smaller Reynolds number, but it uh, will, uh, how to say, happen at a larger Reynolds number with uh, increasing actual angle rotation. And uh, we see that, uh, or we have uh, investigated the uh, in independence principle uh, for that uh, in bridge cable uh, field. And uh, we see some um, large lift var uh, variation uh, when the trough is against the wind, basically when the actual uh, rotation is about 22.5 degrees. And we see that the segment rotation can uh, try to uh, balance the uh, this negative effect. Uh, and also we have uh, try to get the or try to examine the shock number uh, and we see two uh, how to say numbers and at different uh, cases and we see that the uh, dry galloping was not entirely suppressed by the cactus shape and uh, we in the next step I'm going to actually compare the static uh, results we have and also the dynamic uh, response and we try to probably try to develop some numerical prediction models based on these two, try to validate that. And of course, we need more tests or more optimization of the shape to probably have a better aerodynamic performance. Yes. And uh, with that, uh, thanks for uh, your attention. Yeah. Thank you so much for a very nice presentation, Zhong Gao. Uh, well, uh, we still got a few minutes uh, left, so uh, I think we'll open up for questions if anyone has.
Silence. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just uh, <clears throat> for people's information that uh, we are actually uh, going to present uh, part of or more, most of the uh, dynamic results I just mentioned uh, next year in the International uh, Conference of Wind Engineering in Beijing. So there, hopefully, I can have more um, thorough discussion and uh, yeah, explanation for what's happening in the dynamic results. Because yeah, what I presented just now is a preliminary uh, yeah, view of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I got a question. Um, regarding the uh, cactus shape uh, or alternative shape yeah. of the uh, stay cables, yeah. um, in terms of uh, uh, say how many years <clears throat> uh, do you see it before that might be implemented? Um, so I think um, we... If, if at we, all, though, yeah. I think what, what we see now from the previous phase of the wind tunnel test is, of course, we have observed quite a positive uh, kind of effect from the cactus shape, especially in the uh, drag uh, part of it. And we see it's less abrupt drag uh, decrease, but we also see some negative effect in the lift uh, at the, you know, the when the actual uh, rotation is about 20. 2.5 degrees and now we have actually have some uh, thought in mind uh, or the the way to optimize it but that we need to of course to to test it in the wind tunnels and uh, I think um, then to really implement that into real cable uh, uh, cables in the bridges then of course we need to do some other tests as well for example the rain wind induced vibration and also the ice uh, kind of uh, ice, wind ice induced vibration as well. But um, that's a matter of how to say the funding or yeah, we can we can get to do that. So, well, I still I think I have some good faith uh, in it. Yeah. So, I, I, I would say it will take some time, but uh, yeah, we we have some faith in it. <laughs> Good to hear. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? Well, uh, if, if uh, people don't have any more questions, then uh, once again, I would like to thank you for a very nice presentation. I uh, really enjoyed it. <clears throat> I'll uh, also mention that uh, the next webinar that we'll have will be on uh, December 7th uh, when um, Etienne uh, Chenet will present on wind-induced response of cable-supported bridges. So uh, please uh, log on and uh, follow us on that webinar as well. Okay. Thank you so much for uh, presenting Zhongao and thank you all for joining the webinar. I'll now stop.